Hi, my name is Matthew, and in this video, we're going to talk about factoring. We're going to factor polynomials, specifically binomials. We're going to look at the difference of squares. We'll run into the difference of squares as we factor by grouping. And then as a separate little subtopic, I will show you some examples of factoring the sum and difference of cubes, where we have a cube plus a cube or a cube minus a cube, sum and difference. But first things first, let's take a look at the difference of squares. The difference of squares is very generally speaking when you have a square minus a square. So this is the kind of format that we're looking to see if the original problem fits into. And problems one through four here do fit into difference of squares. Another thing that we should note generally is that when you factor a difference of squares, the result should look something like this binomial times this binomial. And you'll notice that they're almost identical except for the fact that one has a plus and one has a minus. Taking an expression like this one and turning it into the product of binomials like this is very easy if we can just figure out what our a and b values are. If we can figure that out, then we take those a and b values and we plug them into these locations for a and for b, obviously, and you should have your final answer. Let's see how that plays out in problem number one. Problem one says 36x squared minus one. Is this really the difference of squares? It is. And I can take the number 30, or sorry, the term 36x squared, and I can rewrite it as 6x in parentheses squared. And the maybe not so obvious one is that the number 1 is also a perfect square, it's 1 squared. And if you watch the video right before this one, about factoring binomials, actually that one was about factoring trinomials. Uh, I mentioned a different way to think of a perfect square. We think of 36 as being a perfect square because it's equal to 6 times 6, or 6 squared. And I recommended framing up or sort of rephrasing the idea of a perfect square. A perfect square is something that's the result of squaring something. So 36x squared in this problem is a perfect square because it's the result of squaring something. It's the result of squaring 6x. And 1, of course, is also a perfect square because it's the result of squaring something, namely the number 1. So here we can identify that our a value is the 6x and our b value is the number 1. So let's go through and replace a and b with 6x and 1. So we have 6x plus 1 times 6x minus 1. And in this particular problem, that's as far as you can go. So I'm putting a box around it. So what are the challenges with this type of problem? One is remembering that the pattern of factoring a difference of squares looks like this. If you can write it as a squared minus b squared, then you must also remember the right-hand side of that equation, a plus b times a minus b. Most people are able to get that to stick in their memory. The next tricky part is identifying a and b. So you must be able to take the square root of these two terms. The square root of 36, pretty easily you get a 6. Square root of x squared, most of us know that that's just x and then inserting that into our parentheses and writing it with a square on the outside helps us to fit the pattern. In problem number two, for those of us that don't like working with fractions so much, you need to remember that if you have the square root of a fraction like m over n, then you can break it down and think of it as, or try to simplify it, by taking the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So in problem number two, 1 fourth y squared can be written to fit the pattern of a squared minus b squared. And our a value is going to be 1 half y quantity squared. 
And I got that by taking the square root of one, <clears throat> which is one, and then the denominator, the square root of four, is two. So some little tricks, I suppose, to help us wrestle with fractions when we really don't like them. So the square root of 9 25ths, while that looks like it would be really awkward, all you have to do is take the square root of the numerator and the denominator separately. Square root of 9 is 3, square root of 5 is 5, and so we end up with minus 3 over 5 squared. Here's your a value, and here's your b value. Plug those into the right-hand side of the equation, and you've got yourself a final answer. So it's possible that we're going to see something that looks like a difference of squares, something that is a difference of squares, during the process of factoring by grouping. Let's take a look at problem number four. The two groups I like to identify by under bracketing. And that first group, I had to cut back a little bit there because I want my first group to end right after the x squared and I want my second group to include that minus sign in front of the 25y. So there are my first, or there are my two groups, and the common factor in my first group looks like it's an x squared. <clears throat> and once the first group gives us an x squared and the second group contributes its x squared, the leftovers, as I like to call them, are the y and the minus four. So I'll put those in parentheses making sure that my y and my 4 look distinct from one another. And this one's a little bit tricky. In the second group, our common factor, and I think we saw this once in the previous video about factoring trinomials, the common factor in the second group is not just a 25, but it's a negative 25. So let's take out that negative 25. Dividing it out of both terms leaves us with what it should leave us with, which is a y minus 4. And remember, you can always double check that you factored correctly by taking your common factor, in this case, negative 25, and distributing it. Negative 25 times positive y does make negative 25y. And the negative 25 times the negative 4, negative times negative makes positive. 25 times 4 is 100, so we have our positive 100. So it looks like we have factored correctly. Now we're going to factor again. This time I use my under brackets to identify my two terms. x squared times y minus four is a term that's being separated by a minus sign from the second term that contains a factor of 25 and a factor of y minus four. So these two terms contain a common factor and it's the obvious one, at least I think it is, visually, what do they have in common? The y minus 4. Since that's our common factor, let's factor it out. Once our first term gives away its y minus 4 and the second term gives away its y minus 4, what do we have left? The x squared and a minus 25. <clears throat> Excuse me, x squared and minus 25. So let's write those in. In parentheses, good. Have we finished factoring? And the answer in this case is no. And we haven't finished factoring yet because x squared I see is a perfect square and 25 is a perfect square, which means those parentheses contain a difference of squares. The a value that's being squared is an x, and the b value that's being squared is the 25. Mm, let's leave out the parentheses there. a squared and b squared minus. Great, so the a value is an x. Okay, so let's write it from left to right again. We're keeping the y minus 4. And now, factored, our difference of squares, is x minus 5 times x plus 5. a minus b times a plus b. The good news is, is if you really needed to or wanted to, or if you're working on a test and you've got some extra time, you want to make sure that this is the right answer, you could FOIL this out and combine like terms, and you will get x squared minus 25, 
And then you could FOIL this and combine like terms, and you should, and you will, get your original expression back. All right, so a nice component to the factoring process is you can always double check your work by multiplying it back out. So that was a difference of squares that we discovered during the factoring by grouping process. Difference of squares. Now we see a difference of cubes and a sum of cubes. The sum of squares, however, is never factorable. You could factor it, but you would imagine end up with the uh, imaginary unit, the square root of negative one, which we uh, denote with a lowercase i. But otherwise, we're going to stick with just these three out of four. The difference of squares, the difference of cubes, and the sum of cubes. And these patterns are worth committing to memory. And there's a little bit of a mnemonic in here, if we can call it that, S-O-A-P. So notice that if this is the original expression that we need to factor, a cubed minus b cubed, that the result, which is written over here, let's just go through and talk about the signs. This is originally a minus sign. This sign is the same as that original minus sign. This sign is the opposite of the original minus sign. And this one's always going to be plus. And you see, if we come down here, whoop, Right there, there's the other plus sign that's always a plus. So let's take it from left to right down here, checking our signs. The original one is a plus. In our factored form, in our answer, the first sign is always the same as the one in the problem, so it's a plus sign also. The opposite of plus is the minus, and the last sign is always going to be a plus sign. So these are the general formats. On the right-hand side of these equations, you've got your two terms to the first power. So you've got an a minus b and an a plus b. And then in the second set of parentheses, you have these trinomials. Begins and ends with an a squared and a b squared. And in the middle, you've got an a b. So whatever trick it is that you use for committing things like this to memory, please use it. Without knowing this pattern, your a quiz question or a test question or even a homework problem is going to take you a lot longer. If you're thinking to yourself, and I don't know how many of you are thinking this, but if you think it's okay if I get one of these factoring problems I'll do what I always do. I'll just go through my answer choices and multiply them out. I don't think you're going to want to do that because you're going to be super foiling something that looks like this, which is going to give you six terms and there are going to be cubes involved and then you have to combine like terms on the six terms and end up with only two. And if your answer option is D and not option A, you're going to have to multiply out four of these things just to discover that the first three were wrong. It's going to get very time consuming, so please again commit those patterns to memory. And let's see which one of these should we try. Let's do number eight. My first task, as it was when I was working with factoring a difference of squares, is to rewrite this so that it fits the format. I want it to fit the format of the sum of cubes. I'm seeing some cubes in there. There's an x to the third and a y to the third. It's screaming cubes at me. And there's a plus sign in the middle, so that yells sum of cubes. So let's see if we can write this as a cube plus a cube. I know that 2 to the third power is 8, and x to the third power is x cubed. So I'm going to have my a value, or I'm going to write my a value as 2x to the third power. And there's my plus sign. I also know that 3 to the third power gives me a 27. y to the third power gives me y to the third power. So let's take the 3y and put it in as our b value. So put some kind of a little note in here that this is a to the third, 
plus b to the third and remembering that when we factor this we're going to get a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared now all we have to do is make it fit the mold so our a value is a 2x plus our b value of 3y and then here it gets a little bit tricky because we need to take our 2x and square it and then subtract the 2x which is our a value times the 3y which is our b value plus the 3y which is our b value has to get squared so maybe if you're taking notes on this I'd say go in here and make sure you write all this stuff down and once you've got it written down rewind the video so that you can just watch me write it out as I'm speaking it I know that hearing it and seeing it and trying to write it down all at the same time can be a little bit tricky so I really want to make sure that you're seeing what's supposed to go where. So I'm going to bring my equal sign down next. The 2x plus 3y doesn't require any additional work. But we've got a little bit of work to do in our second set of parentheses. 2x times 2x makes 4x squared. And there's a minus sign. And now I've got a 2 times a 3 makes 6. And there's the x times the y, all from that middle term. And at the end, 3y squared, that's 3y times 3y, which makes 9y squared. When you're factoring a sum or a difference of cubes, and you get to this point, you're done. This is a sort of a two-step process, I suppose, or maybe it's a one, two, three-step process. But you, not never, but it's very infrequent that I see this trinomial being something that has to be factored further. All right, typically this is where it ends. What's the square root of four? Two. What's the square root of nine? Three. What's two times three? Six. Well, wait, this is a six right here. Isn't this a perfect square trinomial? It's not. You'd have to do 2 times 2 times 3. This would have to be a 12 if it was going to be a perfect square trinomial. So be careful. These things can start to blend and look a little too familiar, and you end up thinking that there's more work to done, work to done, more work to do, when in fact, once you get to this point, you're already done. More to done. Let's try a difference of cubes and let's do, what problem number is this? Number 10. Does that really look like a difference of cubes? If the exponent, I think this is even written here. To remember the order of signs, use soap, okay. To smell better, you should use soap also. And note any power divisible by three is a cube. I see what they're trying to say there. I don't love it, but I see where they're going. Do you remember that if you have uh, let's say r to the power of m and then that's raised to the power of n then you can simplify this by multiplying the exponents together, m times n, right? So if I gave you, uh, let's say this is, um, let's not do it there, let's come down here. Let's say this is r to the 15th power. Couldn't I take the number 15 and split it up and write it as m times n, like maybe three times five? So if I work my way from right to left, I could write this as r to the power of three and then raise that to the power of five, and that's the same thing as r to the 15. But isn't that a perfect cube? Well, it is, it's r cubed. But with the five out here, 
these parentheses, uh, it's not a cube, it's a perfect fifth power. So here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna swap those. Let's write this instead as r to the five cubed. Ah, now it's a perfect cube. So 15 is divisible by three. But that doesn't make 15 a cube. What it means is that we can take this and rewrite it as a cube, namely r to the fifth cubed. Right, so the exponent's not a cube, it just means the whole term can be written as a cube. A little confusing. So let's try applying that to number 10. Step number one, we need to write this as a difference of cubes, which means I have to write it as something to the third power minus something to the third power. What can I put in here so that when I raise it to the third power, it gives me x to the nine? How about x to the third? That way when I multiply those exponents together, the three times the three is gonna give me the x to the nine. And then in the second set of parentheses, I know that two to the third power will give me the eight. <clears throat> and then I have to take the y and raise it to a power that when I raise that to the third is gonna make 15. You see where I was going with my previous example r to the 15, here we've got y to the 15, and certainly y to the five to the three. When you multiply those exponents together, you're gonna to get the 15 you need. So we've done it, we've written it as a difference of cubes. Here's a to the third minus, there's b to the third. So my a value is x cubed. My b value is two y to the five and we can start putting this into factored form. Factored form is a minus b. Let's spread these out a little bit. a minus b times a squared plus a b, always plus b squared. Same, opposite, always plus. We've got soap. I guess it's that I write fast enough that it thinks all of it's one pen stroke, and so when I hit the back button, it tries to erase all of it? I don't know. I don't like it though. All right, so our a value, let's start dropping these things into place. Our a value right here is an x to the third minus the b value is two y to the five. And then over here times our a value is x to the third and that has to be squared plus our a value is x to the third again but times our b value of two y to the five, plus our b value squared, now our b value is two y to the five, and we have to take that and square it and then close those final parentheses. From here, all we have to do is a little bit of cleanup, just like we did in the previous problem, but it's good practice. The first set of parentheses, there's nothing to do. That's nice, minus two y to the five, in our second set of parentheses, x to the three to the two, that makes x to the six, plus I've got x to the three times two y to the five. All we're gonna do is shuffle those factors around, tweak the order a little bit. Let's put the two first, and then the x to the third, and then the y to the five, and then our plus sign, and then we've got two y to the fifth all to the second. So again, I'm right here, just trying to clean that up a little. Two squared is four, and y to the five to the two, multiplying the exponents gives me a y to the 10th power. 
That's one heck of a final answer. But thankfully, it's a final answer. All right, so we've seen differences of squares, running into the difference of squares, coincidentally, in a factoring by grouping problem, and the sum and difference of squares. You've got a little bit of process you need to work on in these problems, and you definitely have some patterns that you need to commit to memory. So I'm going to let you get to it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.